Um, we all know we have a serious problem. It's also very destabilizing, particularly for low-income communities and for communities of color. Um, one of the most common barriers to affordable housing development is what we hear uh, as the not in my backyard issue, the NIMBY uh, response from some folks. Um, unfortunately, much of the opposition that we're hearing about this bill is also, I believe, grounded in NIMBYism. I've heard concerns about preserving neighborhood character or neighborhood control of development approval. But underlying some of these arguments is a desire to make sure that certain neighborhoods, often higher income neighborhoods, are treated differently than others. Certain neighborhoods, some argue, should be off limits even though we're facing a housing crisis. And that's just not, unac that's unacceptable, colleagues. We don't have the luxury of, of uh, doing business as usual here in the state, and we need to, uh, to change. House Bill 2007 would get rid of some of the loopholes that allow NIMBYism to block development when wealthy neighborhoods simply want to self-segregate and prevent affordable housing development in their communities. I want to specifically address uh, the change uh, in the Dash 4 to the automatic protections granted by the National Historic Designation Process, which has become one of the more controversial elements of the bill. First, I think it's really important that we all acknowledge that historic districts can create barriers to building housing. I think you've heard some of that today. Some opponents of the bill have argued that historic districts should not be considered, quote unquote, a supply issue. But the reality is that any land use regulations that create barriers to infill development or more dense development are a supply issue. <coughs> Second, I think we have to acknowledge that land use regulations at the local level have history, they are political, and they should be scrutinized to ensure that they do not perpetuate the racialized inequities that have been built into them. As a 2016 article in The Atlantic stated, when local and state government bodies grant preservation status to historic districts, sometimes entire neighborhoods, they do not always simply protect culture, architecture, and history. Sometimes they also shore up wealth, status, and power. Historic preservation is a tool better used to safeguard the historical resources in which everyone can take pride, not the historical resources that were only ever allotted to winners by race-based housing policies. We are facing a housing shortage with dire circumstances, and frankly, I'm disappointed that this bill has run into some of the same old nimbyism that helped create this crisis by slowing development as our population skyrockets. And I don't think we have to be reminded that we just finished a winter where a lot of people didn't have a place to live. I know the folks in this room have concerns about this bill, and they have been very vocal about it, and I very much appreciate their advocacy. We can only do legislation here when we hear and get feedback on what we're doing. We have, everything we do here has <coughs> consequences and implications. 